Welcome to the Family Builders Podcast. No matter what our family dynamic is, we can all use some help from time to time. Our hope and prayer is that this podcast is a help and a blessing to you each and every week. And now our host, Pastor David Moore and co-host, Pastor A.J. Harold. Well, hello, fellow builders. Welcome to this week's episode of the Family Builders Podcast. This is your host, Pastor David Moore from Lakeview Baptist Church in Newcastle, Oklahoma, and joined as always by my very good friend and faithful co-host from high atop the Hollywood Hills in his palatial crystal crystal studios, Brother A.J. Harold. Pastor A.J. Harold, how are you today? Looking forward to this uh, episode for sure. Just want to give you a quick reminder that we have a Facebook group. You can join Family Builders Podcast on Facebook and receive updates on new episodes as well as uh, ways to interact with uh, Brother Harold and myself. And uh, we also have an email address, familybuilderspodcast at gmail.com. And would encourage you to send us a note to let us know where you're listening from and uh, let us know if we've been a blessing to you and your family or if you have any questions for us or suggestions, we're open, love to hear that. So please do contact us when you can. Brother Harold, you homeschool your kids. Is that correct? Yes, I do. Okay. I don't know if you know this. I I recently saw an article that uh, schools, I believe it was in Australia, are actively, as part of school policy, teaching kids that at some point in their later teen years, they need to completely disassociate from their parents. I don't mean just argue with them or, you know, rage against the man or any kind of thing. I mean, full on, move out, discontinue all communication, have nothing to do with their parents because they're teaching kids that they answer to, quote, the state as opposed to their parents. Can you believe that? I believe it. It's sad, but I believe it. Living in California. (laughs) It is just it is. Yeah, absolutely. Living in California, I can see that. (laughs) It's just so I just I can't. For the life of me, I cannot understand why, and, and, and this is in, you know, another country, but I'm telling you, it's coming here. There's already, you know, things happening in schools here where teachers are telling students, hey, don't tell your parents these things. They don't understand. You, you know better. This generation knows better. And they're, they're planting the seeds for that disassociation as part of the overall attempt by Satan to destroy God's institution of the family. Unfortunately, here in America, we have this great thing called homeschooling. And uh, homeschooling isn't necessarily for everyone. I believe Christian education is for absolutely everyone. And homeschooling is an excellent option if you have the right tools. The folks at Midwest Christian Academy in Illinois offer those right tools for homeschooling. Students at Midwest Christian Academy receive a Bible-based curriculum, which teaches uh, obedience to authority, as well as biblical character to the young people. If you'd like more information on an accredited, individualized homeschool curriculum that emphasizes obedience to authority and worship of God, go to www.midwestchristianacademy. Dot com. To receive a 50% discount on your first year's registration fee, use the code BUILDERS on the referral line. That's www.midwestchristianacademy.com. Do right by your kids and get them a Christian education. Do great by your kids and enroll them in Midwest Christian Academy. I've been pastoring for nine years now in Los Angeles, and I've seen We can say first graders who are now 10th graders. And I beg you to highly consider homeschooling your children. And once again, I'm thankful for resources like Midwestern or Midwest Christian Academy. I'm thankful for that because what it does is encourages mom and dad 
that, hey, we have an opportunity to do something else. Government school is just not an option. Amen. And I can tell you this as someone who homeschooled all five of our kids with Midwest Christian Academy, uh, the resources that they offer are top notch individualized diagnostic testing for students for things like learning disabilities, dyslexia, and so forth, or even just defining where there's gaps in their education so they can build in those gaps and build on them with future years of of schooling. Uh, It's a terrific program. They give transcripts. They give an accredited diploma. They have graduates serving in the military and in military academies and Ivy League schools. Uh, Although these days, I'll tell you, Brother Harold, I don't know if I'd want my kid to go to an Ivy League school just because of the, yeah, because of the garbage that you learn there. So uh, just really strongly encourage our listeners, check out MidwestChristianAcademy.com. Don't forget to use the code BUILDERS on the referral line to get that 50% discount on your registration fee. All right, this week, so, uh, next Sunday, the, or the day after this episode airs, is Father's Day. I remember, uh, <laughs> I remember when I was a kid asking my mom, how come there's Father's Day and Mother's Day, but there's never Kid's Day? And she always came back with the age old, every day is Kid's Day, right? And, uh, and, <laughs> and, and I think sometimes as a dad, I kind of feel like every day is Father's Day, you know, because there's work for a father to do every single day. And Brother Harold, I, I just, you and I, before we came on this episode today and uh, and in some of the things we've talked about, we've been talking about the attacks on the family. And, and I know you have noticed this. We've, I know we've talked about this before, Brother Harold, in, in entertainment and in Hollywood, in, in school system, and just in culture in general, there is this attempt to paint fathers as a caricature of buffoonery, uh, an attempt to show fathers as being out of touch, as being overreactionary, as being uh, uh, angry and dumb and insensitive and careless. And I can tell you this, the dads that I know, I don't know a single dad that's like that. You know, there's, there's stereotypes and then there's caricatures and the caricatures take all of the bad character traits and lump them into one picture. And that is what people try to present as what fatherhood is. But if you go to the word of God, you see that the father in the home is the one who is held accountable before God himself for the way the family is raised and the way the family is conducted. And so that is a far cry would you say, from this ridiculous caricature? No, I would absolutely agree. And I would like to remind all of us, John 10, 10 says, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. So at the end of the day, Satan has constantly bombarded the family. And if he can get the father, well, the mother and children will be easy pickings. And so he's always targeted us as fathers, Uh, us as men, even those who aren't yet fathers. If he can discourage our teenage boys, our our college student young man, then he's way ahead of the curve. And so I'm looking forward to whatever we're going to unveil here in this episode, building up the home, targeting the father. Absolutely. In fact, you know, Brother Harold, you go all the way back to the book of Genesis chapter three, and Satan began attacking fathers. Oh, yeah. And how did he do it? He went to the wife, the weaker vessel, and asked just a simple question, hath God said? And from that questioning of the word of God, mankind was placed in a cursed state, requiring the ultimate sacrifice of the Son of God for our sins. So anybody who thinks for a minute, Oh, there's not a a coordinated attack on families. You are deceiving yourself, my friend, if you believe that. You are choosing to believe. You're like the book of James. It says, you're like a man who beholdeth himself in a glass and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he is. 
uh, uh, you're, you're absolutely in denial if you don't believe Satan is attacking families. And so part of the Family Builders podcast mission statement is to build families, to promote families. They're an institution of God. And in this matter of the father, and I'm not, I'm not neglecting the fact that, you know, there may be listeners today that through no fault of your own, maybe you did some bad things or made some bad choices earlier in life. And now today you realize you need to try to live right, but maybe there's not a father in the picture in your home. Maybe, maybe it was no fault of yours. Maybe the father left, or maybe, you know, maybe that's a, a situation of a, uh, of a widow or a widow, uh, uh, widowing, uh, family. So, so I, I understand that there's, there's situations outside of the fact of there being a father in the home, but for the regular listener who is, is more than likely in a family with a mother and father in the home, let me just point out a couple of things. You know, there's, there's nothing in all of scripture, brother Harold, that in any way, says, look, dads, do what you can, but ultimately, you know, you really can't do much with your kids and your wife. <laughs> you ever notice that? <laughs> I've, I've counseled dads who've come to me and said, oh, I don't, I don't know what to do. You know, my, my wife is, is working against me. The kids don't listen. Well, I'm sorry, but you're the dad. You're the husband. And I'm not talking about, you know, uh, uh, I am man, hear me roar kind of a nonsense. I'm talking about a godly presence of leadership in the home and you know brother harold you mentioned a while ago uh about you know teenage boys and young men getting led astray before they even become fathers you know one of the scariest things in the world for me as a as a more (laughs) as a more seasoned pastor and by that i just mean i've got really gray hair uh but but one of the scariest things in the world for me is when a young man says, I'm called to preach. I immediately begin to pray for God to protect that young man. Satan doesn't have to work nearly as hard to take a young man called to the ministry and lead him astray as he does to take a man who is in the ministry and lead him astray. Yeah, I fully agree. If he can stop it beforehand, you know, it's like, you know, take away the keys rather than trying to stop the car in motion. That's what Satan is trying to do. And, and he's absolutely doing that, not just in our churches, but in our homes. And so a young boy, a teenage boy, a junior high age boy is under assault by Satan with all the hormones and all the temptations and all the things. And Brother Harold, this wasn't even part of, you know, anything I had considered talking about today but parents let me tell you right now if you have a boy that is if you have a boy in your home I don't care how I don't care if he's one keep him away from the internet he doesn't need it I know it's 2024 he doesn't need access to the internet well I'm worried about him he's got to have a cell phone buy him one of those 1990 four foot long, 25 pound phones that you put in a backpack and get him, a, get him access to that. He can't access the internet, but you can sure enough call him and he'll receive that call anywhere. Those things were like space satellites <laughs> you know, for as far as reception goes. But whatever you do, stand between him and access to the internet like you would stand between him and a person with a loaded gun to his head. Because Satan, that's his easiest tool. There's nothing wrong with the internet per se, but the access to the internet gives one the opportunity to access content that will destroy them as a husband and as a father. Brother Harold, I know you've counseled people the same as I have, that that's been their number one issue. Yes, and to help prevent that, I have a 19-year-old son. He's working at a Bible camp this summer. And I will see him on Saturday with a brand new flip phone. Why? Because he has no need to access the internet. He is 19 years old, family builders, but he is still under my direct care. And he even told me, dad, I don't want one. I don't want one. I don't want one. Because I have consistently told him the dangers. Now, he doesn't understand 
but he does believe me and trust me and he's following me as I follow Christ. And so Pastor Moore isn't just saying that and all these guys. No, 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 no. I'm a father too. I have a 19 year old son who has to borrow the camp phone to call us once a day. So I decided let's do a flip phone. That way we could have access and we can text, but he doesn't need access to anything that Satan would dangle before him. By the way, I'm just trying to be a godly father. I'm doing my best for him not to look back and say, Dad, why did you let me? Why did you let me fall in the sin? I, I'm doing my best to at least put up parameters to make it hard for him to fall in the sin. Absolutely. And, you know, Brother Harold, there, I'm sure there will be some who will say, oh, these guys, they're crazy. They're they're stifling their kids and not allowing them to have phones. You know, those kids are going to be so backwards. You know what? Well, well, first of all, my kids are all grown, Brother Harold, and and to be completely honest, I blew it as a parent when they were 14, 15 years old, going and getting jobs. I thought they've got to have phones, and I wanted them to have the phones that you know their friends had, didn't want them to feel backwards, and I bought them smartphones, and I mean, it it was a constant source of concern for me what are they doing? And I'm having to go and check and I'm having to correct and I'm having to, and they're saying, well, you know, this just came and that, that does happen. That does happen. Stuff just shows up on my phone, Brother Harold, that I never searched. I never looked for. And here it comes as a story or through social media. And I'm like, what is that? That doesn't belong there. And I'm immediately blocking and deleting, but you know, you can't unring a bell. And so, and so parents, let me just tell you, you can either wonder if you kept your children back too much, or you can be certain that you put stumbling blocks in their way by allowing them access to something that would destroy them as a husband and a father. And not just the matter of precaution going into a husband, being a husband or being a father, but Brother Harold, I want to talk a little bit in just real terms with you about what it means to be a father. I know we've both witnessed in church as well as outside of church situations where someone maybe thinks being a father simply means procreating and having children. Um, you know, anybody biologically, any male can procreate, but that's... That's not what fatherhood is. Fatherhood is the actual process of raising that human being that came from you. And, and the idea of raising them, you know, of course, well, that takes us to the next caricature. Oh, the father, he's just the guy that comes in swinging the belt. Well, first of all, that's nonsense. We've talked about this. You know, both parents equally need to administer discipline as is necessary but the father specifically ought to be viewed as the one who instructs in the family. That means he's the one who's been there and tells the rest, this is how you get to hear where we're going. If you go to the book of Proverbs over and over and over again, my son, hear the instruction of thy father. Hear the instruction of thy father. Hear the instruction of thy father over and over and over again. 26 times out of the 31 chapters of Proverbs, the word father is used in regards to the son. So there is a clear biblical basis for the father being in this leadership role in the home. Brother Harold, as a, as a father of 12, when you think of just fatherhood in general, Besides, you know, being broke and <laughs> and dealing with 12 different personalities in your home, it's got to be like being in a multiple personality disorder sometimes. <laughs> but besides those obvious things, Brother Harold, when you think of being a father, what does it bring to your mind? Well, you know, I'm the word nerd. And so here's the definition of father, at least one of the definitions. One who feeds and supports or exercises parental care over another. What I want to hone in on, though, is that not the feeds, we got that, exercises, parental care over another, we got that, but it says and supports. We are the Family Builders Podcast, 
in my church, right in the middle of our sanctuary is a post. I wish we could remove that post, but that post is there to support the entire roof structure. Without that post, we would have a much better view for a while, <laughs> but eventually that roof would cave in. And so as a father, my desire and passion is not just to feed them or exercise parental care over them, but to support them. What's crazy is if we define support outside of the parameters of scripture, we're going to think we're doing a good job, whereas we may actually remove the beam that is required to keep everything together. And so simply put, as a father, I am to support them biblically. I am to train them up in the way that they should go. I am to say yes. I am to say no. I'm to pray with them. I'm to play with them. I got a, re a phone call from my son this week, who, who again is at camp, and he just poured out to me, and I poured out to him and Brother Moore. I got to pray with my son on the phone before we hung up. He is that, not in my home. It is a blessing, Brother Moore. That is absolutely awesome. I know that's, you know, as a as a father whose kids are out of the home, you know, one of the really cool things is when they call and say, hey, dad, do you, you know that thing that you taught me about this area of life? I get it now. And it's not, I mean, we joke about, oh, but I told you so. It's great. It's not the I told you so. It's that the, it's that the, the teaching took root, that they got it. My, my oldest son, um, we, we talked about the problems we had where he was went through a time of rebellion and backslidden. Um, but he got his heart right and he got married to a wonderful young lady and, and they moved um, to uh, uh, Iowa for a while and then moved to, to Michigan. And uh, he, he texted me one day and he just said, Hey dad, I just want you to know. He said, we paid off the last of our debt today. And when he had gotten out of the army, I mean, he didn't have a job and, there, you know, he had a hard time finding something that, that, you know, when, when you go to the army and you're a grunt, <laughs> an infantryman, you know, they don't give you a lot of computer training and a lot of finance training and so forth. So, you know, he wasn't even really able to, to take blowing stuff up and shooting at things and translate that into a civilian job. Uh, but <laughs> so, so he had a little trouble finding a job for a while and he, and he found something and he worked hard and he applied himself and he, he advanced and he grew in his position as so he doesn't make a, a huge amount of money, but he makes a decent living. And he said, dad, we just took the principles that you taught us of tithing, of being careful. And we've worked at paying our bills. And he said, everything you said was right. Listen, everything I said wasn't right because I said it. and I'm the great grand high father. Everything I said was right because it all came from the word of God. Brother Harold, in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 1, we read, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And then verse 4, I want us to look at specifically today, says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. And when we think of provoking not your children to wrath, obviously for me at least, what comes to mind is the idea of not uh, not being a hypocrite in front of my kids, uh, not giving them reason to doubt the Bible and to doubt the truth of what I say by my own failures. But really that word provoke, it, it, and I know I don't mean to step on Brother Harold, your title is the world champion word nerd. Uh, and, I, and I didn't really even look it up, but just from a knowledge of, of words, you know, I know what it means to provoke something. It doesn't mean just to antagonize, but to antagonize for a response. And here the response is wrath. What is it? Whose wrath? My wrath? No. Their wrath? Well, they're going to be wrathful with me if I don't lead them right, but ultimately... It's receiving God's wrath. When I don't lead my children and teach my children according to the things of God, 
I'm opening them up, not just opening them up. No, I'm leading them to a response of experiencing the wrath of God. Yeah, it's that provoking. It's really to make angry. And I know I've been a father for 22 years, and I can tell you instances, many of them, where I made my children angry. And you know why I made them angry? Because I was angry. I was in sin. And because I got angry because you knucklehead child, now I'm going to make you angry. And all I do is continue the cycle of sin. And so as a father, man, it's vitally important that I walk and talk with God, in my opinion, first thing in the morning. Brother Moore, I've learned from you. You said you, you try not to go to bed now and you wake up the same way reading the word of God. Man, that spoke to me as a man thinking, well, I read it in the morning, but I don't even think about it before I go to bed. And so that was a few weeks ago. Well, that's changed in my life. And so as a father who had an opportunity today, Brother Moore, to provoke my son to wrath, another son, a different one, um, I have to talk slowly. I have to think before I speak. <laughs> I'm doing all of that to not provoke him to, to anger. But Hebrews 12, uh, talking about the church, provoking them to love and to good works. And so I want to provoke my children in a way that's honoring to God, not in a way that makes them angry or offended or or even to walk away, you had mentioned, to walk away from God, to make them think that faith isn't a big deal or our walk with God. Fathers have a huge responsibility. Absolutely. You know, I, I heard a testimony from a preacher one time, and, uh, you know, he hasn't been on our podcast, but I, his testimony was that he never even realized that he was having anger issues. And and I really, Brother Harold, if I could take a quick little fun rabbit trail, I hate that word issues. We don't have issues. We sin. Amen. <laughs> I, I, I hate the word issues, but this, this preacher, his, it's his testimony. I love to use his word. He was having anger issues. And he did not really, he wasn't mad at his son. He wasn't mad at anybody in his family. He was mad at other people outside of the family that were doing things that, frankly, I couldn't understand getting aggravated at. But Brother Harold, his testimony was this. His son that grew up in his house watching his dad be angry with other people said, I want no part in your beliefs that leave you this angry. And his son walked away from church, walked away from the family, would have nothing to do with them, and left the father with the knowledge that it was his own anger that provoked his son. I heard that, and I think I cried for three days. A little bit feeling sorry for that preacher, but a whole lot more feeling bad for myself because of any time I'd ever provoked my children to wrath. And I, I tell you, one of the greatest things is when your adult kids come to you and say, hey, dad, you were right. Thank you for teaching me that. But Brother Harold, one of the hardest things is when you have to go to your adult children and say, hey, listen, as your father in this area, I blew it. I'm sorry. Boy, that's that's tough. <laughs> That is tough. Uh, <clears throat> you're right now. You're probably thinking, "Where is the happy Father's Day part?" I mean, we're, <laughs> so far we're just beating up on dads. But you know, maybe I'm just the only one that feels beat up right now, Brother Harold. And I, let me tell you, my toes are getting stomped on right now. Well, let me help you with that because you brought up Ephesians six four, and ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath. But the verse, thank God, doesn't end there. Amen. It says, but in a total contrast, bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Let me give you an example that happened today and yesterday. My son right now, and I told you already in the pre-show, Alden, our four-year-old, is sick. He's been running a fever. And I have to be honest, 12 kids, when they get sick, I kind of enjoy it. And, and you got to understand why they get sick. And then all of a sudden, they become these snuggle buddies. Oh, yeah. And Alden, at four years old, barely holds my hand. But because he's sick, sits on my lap, 
He makes these weird cat sounds. Purr, he's purring. I don't know what's going on there. But he's basically just soaking in the love because he just doesn't feel good. And he's just sitting there humming kind of himself to feel better. And I sit there and I think, you know what? As a father, there's nothing greater than when your son feels comfortable enough with you and your daughter feels comfortable enough with you to just scooch in and enjoy the love. And when you provoke your children to wrath and to anger, and I've done it, I've done it. It does not provoke them to want to come sit next to you. They don't want anything to do with you. And so I'd encourage you, fathers, here's the happy Father's Day part. Bring them up. Take your hand. Bring them up in the nurture and admonition, not of your own, but of the Lord. All of this is to be reminding of us, or at least to remind us, to bring them up God's way. And that's what this podcast is all about, trying to give us the tools in our tool belt to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean... I'm sorry, Alden's sick, but while you have him at the doctor, you might also have them check out that cat sound thing. <laughs> That's a little bit disturbing. I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're praying that Alden feels better before, you, especially before you leave on your trip here. But you know, the idea of bringing your children up. You know, fathers, you don't, you don't, uh, you don't take a a lead and put it on your child like you do a dog and drag them along with you you bring them up you place them alongside of you and you compel them to go with you you don't say to your child go to church you say to your child we together are going to church you don't say to your child have devotions you say to your child we together are having devotions. You don't tell your daughters, remain pure. You say to your children, we together are remaining pure. You don't say to your sons, stay off of the internet and stay away from the temptations. You say to your sons, we together are staying away from temptations. Brother Harold, bring them up. Bring them, not take them, not drive them, not send them. Bring them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, not in dad's wisdom. Yeah, without the word of God, we would be hopeless as fathers. And what's amazing is even though we as fathers have the word of God, if we don't run to that well, if we don't bow our knees and hearts before the Lord, I'm reading in the book of Revelation for my devotion. And one of the names of Jesus is the word of God. Yeah. And I stopped reading and I thought to myself, he's the word of God. If I really love him, then I would spend more time in his word to get to know him. And fathers, I know we're getting close on our time. I want to encourage you, start over, hit the reset button. Just spend time with God alone. And then my first sermon, I'm preaching camp next week, Brother Moore. And my first sermon is going to be from Acts where Saul on the road to Damascus, he gets converted. But he says this, Lord. What will thou have me to do? That's our first sermon. And I'm just going to encourage the kids to say, before we get deep into camp, let's start off by saying, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And as fathers, you may be like Pastor Moore, where your children are out of the home. You may be like me, where we're still raising up uh, young ones in the home. I would encourage you today to just say, Lord, what will thou have me to do? I want to be a father that's pleasing to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, as you mentioned, Brother Harold, we're getting kind of close on time, but I do want to make sure we take time for our weekly builders tip. And, I, and I've got one. I know it's kind of your week to do it, but I kind of have one that goes along with being a father. We kind of talked about this before, but the builders tip this week is keep it simple. Keep it simple. Dads, you don't have to go to a huge expense. You don't have to make it a huge deal to be a part of every aspect of your kid's life, to be involved. Just keep it simple. If your child is, is doing schoolwork, and is, you know this is a great thing if you're homeschooling through Midwest Christian Academy, our sponsor this week, uh, but if you're homeschooling, sit down in the evening with your child and say, don't just say, how was school today? Say, bring me your schoolwork. Let's look at it together. Which that's not a bad idea, anyways. <laughs> uh, you know, is there something you're struggling with? I can see it now. Let's let's talk about this. Talk to your kids. 
you know, like you would have a conversation with somebody at work about sports. Talk to your sons about sports. Like you would have a conversation with somebody about an area of interest that you have. And for me, I, I love history. I talked to my daughters about history. I remember when my, my youngest daughter, she was about 15 and she was working at a job at a, at a resort in the, in the video arcade. And she comes home and she says, dad, I want to make sure I got this right. Um, one of my coworkers was talking about something with socialism and how great socialism is. And she said, I told him, no, socialism is a failed experiment that only leads to totalitarianism and that the free market economy is right. And I said, where did you get all that? She said, dad, I just listened to you and you're talking. You talk about that stuff all the time. And I didn't even realize I was having that effect on her. I wish I had, I could have, I could have included her more in the conversation. But, but just include your kids in the conversation. You don't have to take them to Disney World and pay thousands and thousands of dollars to be an influence on your kids every single day. Dads, keep it simple. Be a part of your kids' lives. Make your kids a part of your life. Do everything together so that your kids can be brought up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Brother Harold, do you have any closing remarks before we finish today? Yeah, real quick. Um, I hate to be a spoiler on Peculiar Pilgrim's podcast, but life is made up of memories. And what we call memories tomorrow are actually being made today. Yeah. And so memories are made up of moments. Don't miss the moment. Don't miss right now with your child. And so it may be a good idea to stop this recording, walk away, stop listening and just go, hey, son, hey, daughter, let's go to the living room. Let's just pray together just right now. God's always available. And so hit that reset button, Pastor Moore. Let's Amen. start over and let's keep going for the glory of God. Amen. That's a great point. I do want to remind our listeners, we do have our email address, familybuilderspodcast at gmail.com, our Facebook page, Family Builders Podcast on Facebook. Please join the Facebook group, take part in the discussions, send us your emails and comments. We've gotten several uh, posts lately on the Facebook page of people asking questions and making comments and uh, on previous episodes that were really valued. We appreciate your encouragement. We're so thankful that this is helping people. We want to get the word out more and more. I tell you, we got some more exciting stuff coming up, Brother Harold. Uh, very soon, we're going to have our website live. You'll be able to go on there and for a reasonable donation, receive some very cool looking Family Builders podcast merchandise. Uh, you'll be able to listen to past episodes on there. Unfortunately, I'm so sorry. I have to apologize. You're going to see pictures of us. Uh, you're going to meet the hosts and see what we look like. And again, I apologize. There's just simply nothing I can do about that. Uh, but but once that website is live, we'll, we'll announce it on the Facebook page and uh, you can take advantage of yet another resource there. Want to once again mention our sponsor this week, Midwest Christian Academy. For all of your homeschool needs, go to www.midwestchristianacademy.com. Remember to use the code BUILDERS on the referral line when you enroll and receive a 50% discount in the first year's registration fee. Brother Harold, that's all we have time for today. Why don't you go ahead and take us out? Sure. Thank you for listening to the Family Builders Podcast. Please subscribe and share this week's podcast with your friends and family. Also, if you have any questions for either of us, please do not hesitate to email us at familybuilderspodcast at gmail.com. Who knows? Maybe we'll even answer your question on one of our future episodes. Until next time, family builders, never let up.